So let me tell you about the most powerful dream I've ever had in my life. I'm standing on a cliff and there is a game going on. And it's not just any game. It's a game about life and that where two teams will fight each other to death. Each team has five players and team A is standing on one cliff and team B is standing on the other cliff. And if our team loses, our country loses. So obviously everyone on our side of the cliff is terrified. Everyone is afraid and so am I. Our team has one chance of winning and that is Davido. All eyes are on him. He's our best fighter slash athlete and everyone loves him. And as I'm walking, around on the cliff i'm a little bit confused what is this game that we are about to play should i be afraid myself what is going to happen with me etc etc and as i'm thinking that there's a guy who takes me with him and puts an armor on me and a parachute and all of a sudden i realize in my dream that i'm one of the fighters myself that I will have to jump down the cliff and start fighting afterwards. And so obviously now I'm even more terrified. I'm basically shitting in my pants because I cannot fight at all. I have never used a parachute and I don't even know the game that we're playing. I suddenly find myself on the edge of the cliffs next to, next to my team members and we are waiting for Davido to come. Our only hope. And as we are waiting, there's a black guy that starts talking to me. And he says something like this. We have faith in you. You are going to save us as you always did, Davido. Our entire team suddenly jumps from the cliff, including myself. They pull the parachutes. And as I'm falling, I wake up and I realize that I am Davido. A guy who's afraid as f who doesn't even know the game and is supposed to save the country. And during that day, I thought a couple of times about the dream and it started to make sense to me that I will never be able to get rid of my fears, that the Davidos of this world are not people who are not afraid. They are afraid as fuck, but they jump in anyway. It started to dawn on me that it's not about not getting rid of your fears, but about jumping in despite those fears. All the arts that I admire, the Da Vinci's and stuff, they, they were full of fear, but they found a way to jump in anyway. Which sounds simple, but it's probably one of the most important skills that you can develop as a human being. The skill of simply starting. A lot of us are afraid when it comes to starting something new. Finding a gallery, pl publishing our art, trying to sell our art, st starting a YouTube channel. And the thing about starting is that you don't need to be great in order to start, but you have to start in order to be great. And so that's what I want to talk about in this video. I remember a lot of fears in the beginning of my art career, all the way in the beginning when I decided to jump in and started to take my art career serious, I was insecure about everything. I didn't know how to price my art and what a correct price was. And so whatever price I came up with, I felt insecure about. I was afraid that it would be too much or not enough. The thing about pricing, however, is that you can just change them. If they're too high, lower them. And if they're too low, then increase them. But you have to start and price your art before you can lower or increase it. Another thing I was insecure about were my pictures of the artworks themselves. I didn't know anything about photography and thought that if I didn't represent my art correctly, that I wouldn't have a chance. And so I basically doubted about everything there. Is it okay to change the saturation on my image? Or is that not done with artworks? Is it okay to put the contrast up or is that somehow cheating? Perhaps people will think that I try to make my art look better than it actually is. And I definitely want to be honest, of course. And so looking back, that was all unnecessary. Increasing or decreasing your contract is of course not cheating in any way. Another thing was marketing. Sometimes I didn't dare to do a particular type of marketing because... I was afraid that dealers and galleries might not take me seriously if I would do this type or that type of marketing. All the way in the beginning of Instagram, for example, I didn't dare to use it because I didn't saw any of the major artists and galleries using it. And I obviously thought there was a reason that they were not using it. A reason that I'm not aware of. And I thought that I would make fun of myself by using it. I thought that these galleries would not take me serious afterwards. 
guess what? All of them are massively using it now. And all those fears that I had were just fears in my head. There was no actual reason for me to believe those things. And looking back to all those insecurities about marketing, taking pictures, pricing my art, it's very clear that all of those insecurities were unnecessary. None of them helped me in any way and almost all of the fears I had never actually happened in real life. And for the largest part were therefore just a waste of time. And this is exactly what the beginner's mind does. The beginner's mind creates reasons to not do things and it does this through fear. But here's the thing, the only way to get rid of those insecurities to get rid of those fears is to just go out there and do. Stop making excuses and just do. There's no YouTube video or thought process that can help you with those insecurities. Doing is the only cure. And so ironically, we are oftentimes waiting until all of our insecurities are gone before we start doing things when in reality, it's only through the doing things that our insecurities will go away. At this moment, there is an NFT hype going on and I see artists falling for the same insecurity trap that they fell for a couple of years earlier. I see artists talking about how bad it is for the environment, how it is a scam and all those things, but those are all just fears and insecurities. The reality is that NFTs are indeed bad for the environment, but so is Amazon, so is Netflix. Watching five hours of Netflix is way more destructive for the environment than selling and or minting and selling an NFT. Buying one small item from Amazon is more destructive for the environment than buying an NFT. The canvas and oil paint and heavy chemicals that you are using to make your paintings are way more destructive for the environment than buying, making and selling an NFT. But somehow people are not talking about this. Somehow people are not putting these NFT issues in perspective. And so what are these environmental issues around NFTs that artists are talking about? Well, well, they are excuses to not do. They are insecurities. A lot of times we think that we are not good enough to start something. We are not good enough at making art to give art tutorials. We haven't made enough money through investments to talk about investing. Or we didn't graduate a famous art school and therefore we don't think we deserve these galleries so that we don't even ask. I'm not sure why we think that way, perhaps because the artists that we've studied in art history books are all purebred geniuses, which gives us the false impression that being a genius is a minimum requirement. Back in the days, it wasn't good enough to just be the best painter of water lilies. No, you also needed to be a pseudo-professional gardener like Monet. It wasn't good enough to be an amazing painter. No, you also needed to be an amazing sculptor, inventor, military engineer, draftsman and architect like Leonardo da Vinci. It wasn't good enough to be one of the best writers. No, you also needed to be a massive scientist and found a new branch of science like Goethe did when he invented morphology. But the reality might just be that when something is written in history books, it looks way bigger than it actually is. In the beginning of this video, I said that you don't need to be great in order to start, but you need to start in order to be great. But the truth is that you don't even need to be great. Greatness is, is perhaps even a lie that history tries to tell us. If we look at people who are perceived as the greatest in their industry and we look close, we oftentimes don't see that much greatness at all. In order to be a business and sales expert, you would think that you at least need to have developed one successful business, but in reality, that's not true. Or that in order to sell out one of the biggest boxing stadiums in the world, you need to at least be a boxer. Or to sell art, you need to at least be an artist. Or that you need to be born with lips in order to develop a successful lipstick brand. Or that you have to graduate high school in order to be a climate change expert. Or that you need to be able to draw in order to be an artist. Or that you need to be a teacher to teach or that you need to know something about politics in order to become the president or that you should at least have a psychology practice in order to be the most famous psychologist in the world or you need to have at least had one solo art exhibition before you can hope to sell your work for 69 million dollars. I guess what I want to say is that greatness is oftentimes nothing more than perceived greatness. You have to start in order to be great, but even that is kind of questionable. 
Perhaps you don't have to be great at all. We live in the 21st century and in this century, being the best is simply overrated. Degrees don't mean anything anymore. And greatness is achieved through showing your face enough times on social media. Moving on, another thing I want to talk about is the internal dialogue of becoming an artist or starting whatever creative project it is that you want to start. Because if I look at the videos on my channel, most of them explain things step by step and talk about how to do things and i do think that that is extremely important and really missing in schools today schools don't talk about how to run an art business but there's one thing missing from my videos you don't see the internal dialogue battles that you need to fight as an artist i don't talk about that because it's very hard to talk about that it all depends on the life that you've lived and the internal demons that you have created for yourself what bullshit you have been telling yourself and doubts that you have repeated in your head until they became the truth in some kind of strange self-sabotaging wishful thinking type of way and so i don't think i can tell you how to overcome those inner demons because that depends on your personal situation but what i can do is tell you that the only way to overcome them is through doing if we take the previous examples of pricing my art taking pictures or marketing myself all of these insecurities were bs things that i said to myself this was all internal dialogue type of stuff and the moment i started doing those things doubts just melted away i think this is the problem with the schooling system in school, they expect you to study everything and only after you know everything, they ask you to put it in practice. And so what they are effectively teaching people is to make sure you know everything before you do it. But here's the thing, for the most important things in life, relationships, raising children, starting a business, making that creative project that you wanted to make, you are simply not going to know before you do it. In real life, you are going to have to jump in before you know how to do it and trust that somehow along the way you will figure it out and this is not taught in schools in schools they teach you the exact opposite what we should be teaching ourselves is the process of learning and implementing immediately all the way in the beginning i was focused too much on the learning aspect in the beginning i was focused too much on learning from books ted talks and things like that and then in the end i would watch business youtubers like value tainment and gary vaynerchuk and the truth is that i wasn't going anywhere because i was just learning and not applying anything i was doing what they taught me in school namely studying and not applying and this strategy just simply doesn't work. And so the question we should ask ourselves is perhaps what if doing is more important than learning? What if the way you market yourself actually doesn't matter as long as you market yourself? What if the way you price your art actually doesn't matter as long as you price yourself? And what if the way your paintings look in picture format actually doesn't matter? What if the only thing standing between you and your goals are the excuses you are telling yourself? Now, in order to make this video complete, we should be talking about how to actually start your art career. What are some of the things you should be doing to get those first sales coming in? How can you find collectors for your art? How can you find an audience? What platforms should you use to sell your art, etc., etc., etc.? But that would be another 15 minutes and frankly, a completely different video. And so I'm very sorry, but we are not going to do that predominantly because i already did it's called how to start a lucrative art career and you could be watching it right now hope to see you there ciao ciao